everybody. John Pineker with the Mojave Valley Daily News, and this is your Daily Dose for Wednesday, January 13th. The Daily Dose is brought to you by the Tri-State Radiology Center in Fort Mojave, Arizona. Tri-State Radiology Center is an American College of Radiology accredited facility. Tri-State Radiology serves the Tri-State area and now accepts Medi-Cal. Our professional staff is here for you and will work with the health care providers in the community to help take care of your health. Remember, at Tri-State Radiology Center, your image means the world to us. All right, good morning, everyone. Jeff, you know what date is? Hump day. It is hump day. Wednesday. So Wednesday is our big, big paper. Uh, our top story today, fire limited to garage. This was out at uh, 1600 block of Alta Vista Road. It was limited uh, to the garage. The fire department got out there pretty quickly and, and took care of it. Um, it was limited, the, the damage was limited to the garage. There's mostly just smoke uh, damage. They don't know what the cause was, but the fire department was sure to uh, warn everyone that um, there's a lot of fire hazards in the garage. So you have the uh, lithium ion batteries, automotive batteries, a lot of flammable materials. I know a lot of us keep our gas cans in the garage. Uh, they just warn you that when charging those kinds of batteries, please make sure you don't overload the outlets near them. Um, that's been, I guess, one of the problems is that the uh, outlets near them will, will overload, uh, cause a spark, and then all the flammable materials that you have in the garage will, uh, will go from there. So, all right. Our uh, second story here, man beaten and robbed in Laughlin. Uh, this is kind of a weird story. It was late Monday night. Um, a man was seriously injured when him and two of his buddies left the Edgewater and were walking towards the uh, Bell, the Colorado Bell. And when they left the Edgewater, they appeared to be intoxicated. Security tried to stop them. Um, they pushed through it and kept going. And then at some point between the Edgewater and the Bell, two of them turned on the other one, beat him pretty bad. He had to be uh, flight for life to Sunrise uh, Hospital in Las Vegas where he's in critical condition. Um, and they robbed him. So I don't know. We don't know why, but that's what happened. Um, another odd story here. You see the picture here. Oops, here. Bomb threat in Fort Mojave. You see we got the QR code down there as well. Uh, so this was at the Maverick station out there in Fort Mojave. I think Jeff has some video of that. Um, so a, a Fort Mojave convenience store was evacuated for a short time Tuesday after a bomb threat reportedly was received. No explosives were found during a search of the Maverick store at the 4400 block of Highway 95. According to a report from the Mojave County Sheriff's Office, an employee called the Sheriff's Office after receiving a call at the store from a man claiming there was a bomb in the building. Deputies responded, found no substantial evidence to support the threat. So um, they didn't find anything, but uh, a, lot of, a little wasted time and a, certainly an inconvenience at the convenience store. See what I did there, Jeff? Inconvenience at the convenience store. Very clever. <laughs> All right, we, uh, I showed you the QR code. Jeff showed you a little of the video. You can go to our YouTube page and see the rest of the video. Uh, there's a workshop tonight about prescription drug addiction. Uh, it's at the Anderson Fieldhouse at 6 o'clock. Uh, representatives from the Mojave, Mojave County Department of Public Health will be there talking. There are no kids allowed, so it's only parents um, and, uh, and other adults. Uh, topics include prevention, education, early warning signs, resistance strategies, safe storage and uh, disposal, and um, Nar Narcan education. That's the, the drug used to uh, prevent overdose. Um, so we know that even with COVID, we still have a big uh, uh, prescription drug problem here. Uh, so go on and check it out. County reports 253 new COVID cases and six deaths. One of those deaths were in Bullhead City. It was a person in their 70s. Um, so numbers continue to climb. We are still, the, we're, we're number one in the state, um, or I'm sorry, we're still number one in the country when it comes to percentage uh, per capita of people testing, testing positive. Uh, 
last week we were um, out of every, uh, it was 109, 109 out of a thousand uh, in the state uh, by population, so not good. Crush Board OKs stalled JROTC agreement. This is the junior ROTC uh, led by Major Davis over at Mojave High School. Um, there's been some issues. Uh, Benji Hoekstra back in early in 2019 before uh, Superintendent Thor got here uh, approved an agreement between Mojave High School and I'm sorry, between the, the high school district and the junior ROTC. Um, but the contract was never followed through as far as how it was going to be uh, put together. So Major Davis and the ROTC were put under the CTE, the Career and Technical Education Department. Uh, that wasn't appropriate um, because then he's limited by the CTE uh, instruction. They they tell you how the ROTC is supposed to be run. Um, that's not going to work. Um, Major Davis had brought it up several times on how he uh, asked that it be fixed, that he'd be a separate department and department head. Um, after uh, Superintendent Hookstore left and, and Superintendent Flora took over, uh, he started raising his concerns about it, that it wasn't being followed through. Uh, but the new board um, under uh, the new president, Dr. Cardone, and, and some of the other new board members, uh, they worked out the agreement on Monday at their, uh, at their um, board meeting and, and got him all taken care of. So it, it ends up instead of a $2,000 stipend, he gets a $500 stipend. But the Air Force, which is this is uh, associated with the Air Force, they can dictate how the curriculum is going to go for the junior ROTC. Uh, let's see. Government, government, politics, politics. Uh, yesterday, the uh, Speaker of the House, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, asked the Vice President to go ahead and invoke the 25th Amendment. He said, nope. And so the House has moved forward on uh, impeachment proceedings. They uh, are supposed to vote today in the House. The way this works is you just need a simple majority in the House, which the Democrats have the majority. Um, then it goes on to the Senate, and the uh, Senate, you have to have a two-thirds vote. So right now, it's basically 50-50 in the Senate, uh, so they would have to get 50, 17, I guess, uh, Republican senators to go along with it. That looks pretty unlikely, although there's a handful that have uh, said that they will vote for it. Um, but again, it's it's two-thirds of those present. So uh, on the House side, there were five Republicans who abstained, who just weren't there. Um, if the same thing happens on the Senate, uh, it could be close. We'll see. Uh, we got a couple of nice sports stories. The first one is uh, Zach Hammett from River Valley High School. You see Zach down here. He is at the, he's a running back down at River Valley. This is at the Ed Doherty Award Luncheon. We talked about it when, when Zach was our Athlete of the Week a couple of months ago uh, and Athlete of the Month. Zach uh, was invited to the Ed Doherty Awards ceremony as one of the uh, state's top uh, football players. Um, this The Ed Doherty Trophy is kind of a, uh, it's like the Heisman Trophy for Arizona high school football players. He didn't win it. Um, it was won by Ty Thompson of Mesquite, but uh, it was just an honor for him to be nominated and be there. Our big story, the AIA reinstates winter sports. Um, it's awesome. So we know that winter sports were supposed to, because of COVID, they were pushed off to January 18th to actually start competing. Um, a couple of days ago, the AIA said, no, we're going to cancel all winter sports and we'll see you in the spring. Uh, that raised a lot of problems within the state. Um, a lot of uh, athletes, parents uh, raised a, a stink about it. Um, I'm sorry, raised, there was some backlash. That's a more appropriate term, right? Yes. A little backlash. There was a little backlash. 
So the AIA uh, looked at it again yesterday. When they voted to cancel it, it was five to four to cancel it. When they went back uh, yesterday and took another look at it, it was five to four to reinstate it. So one person changed the whole course of, of uh, history for a lot of seniors, especially. Uh, there will be some protocols put in place. Probably the most uh, I don't know, Im important one is mask will be required to play, no exceptions. So you're gonna see basketball teams with all 10 players out there wearing masks along with the referees and the coaches and everybody that's soccer players out there. Look, I can't breathe playing soccer the I way I was just going to say, that's putting them to the test to see if they're going to pass out or not out yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of work. And if you're an athlete that already has asthma or something and you're asking them to wear a mask, that, that could be a little difficult. But um, there's no spectators allowed uh, other than um, – uh, the, the parents, even the media is going to have to request from the athletic directors permission to come out there. Can I please come? Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff's going to be calling ADs asking if he can get out there and shoot some of the some of their sports. But the important thing is that they're going to be able to play um, some of these kids that are counting on scholarships and that to go and uh, move on to the next level. It's very beneficial to them. So, so that's cool. Hey, Jeff, you see this? 99-cent avocados over at Smart and Final. Are you going to make some guacamole? I will for sure be out there getting some guacamole. What else we got? Uh, on Wednesday is a day that we do our Laughlin Times. Uh, top story there, Vista Health cuts ribbon on Laughlin facility. Um, we get a lot of new medical facilities going out in Laughlin, which is great. Uh, a couple years ago, they brought in the... Uh, the VA center over there. This is Vista Health. Um, they're bringing in a practice with four doctors. Um, it's the third healthcare facility in Laughlin to either announce its opening or it's planned to do so recently. Joining the Southern Nevada Healthcare Facility that's already there. And then the Laughlin Community Health Center is scheduled to open its grand opening and ribbon cutting this Saturday from 11 to 2. Um, but the Vista Health Center has a uh, it's located in the Laughlin Town Center, right near the market there. It has four doctors, Dr. Arshad. These are some very familiar names over on this side of the river. Dr. Arshad, Dr. Syed, Dr. Shafiq, and Dr. Mirza. Um, so I think uh, those names are real popular here. They're board certified in different specialties, including cardiovascular, vascular, neurovascular, pulmonary. Um, they're just a one-stop shop with a lot of uh, different modalities um, covered here. It's a big story here. I'm not going to go through it, but there's a big story here on the Nevada Attorney General warning, warning Nevadans about different scams, including debt relief. There's some COVID-19 vaccine stuff. Um, just please, if you get these phone calls or if you get these emails, check everything out. Don't Don't send your social security number and, and all those kinds of things out to everybody so it's a nice big long story uh, please check it out weather wise uh, it's going to be beautiful jeff in the 70s it's supposed to hit 70 today and this is the coldest day of the next week um, no wind yeah no yeah you're not supposed to say the w word i had to what's wrong with you Wednesday is also the day for our entertainer. Uh, if you're not familiar with the entertainer, it is primarily uh, casinos, um, different specials they have. Uh, here's the thing on the gourmet room. Shrimp mania is going on at the gourmet room. Uh, different points of interest in our community, and that's the lead story here is Grand Canyon Caverns. They're up on Route 66. You ever been up there, John? I have, I actually. In a former life, did a ghost hunt at the uh, at the Grand Cavern Caverns. That sounds fun. It's pretty awesome. So it's our center story here. Uh, check it out. Uh, if you've never been there, it's pretty awe-inspiring. They have an elevator that takes you 21 stories down into the ground. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty sketchy down there. A little chilly, but pretty sketchy. Over the years, documented. They have eight people that have died in that area, so they um, it's kind of a, a ghost hunting thing you can do. You can also stay the night down there, which I don't 
This right. reminds me of the Bermuda Triangle. People disappearing and stuff. Yeah. Don't ask any questions. There are people, people that uh, a friend of mine has stayed down there, and he said it's it's pretty um, intimidating uh, staying down there. So they do ghost rides, they do tours, uh, but even if you just want to do the basic thing, just go down and check it out. It's pretty awesome. So underground adventure. Our other story, another one that strikes home. If you ever wanted to learn how to play roulette, but you were intimidated, there's a story in here that tells you it's called Roulette 101. Isn't roulette one of the easiest games to play on on the floor? I think there's a strategy to it. Oh. I should probably read the story, huh? I think so, if you want to know the strategy. <laughs> I guess there's a strategy to it. I mean, you can go down there and, and bet your lucky number or bet red or bet black or whatever. But There's got to um, be a pattern or, or a way it... You know what? The I ball always, falls on the number or I something. I always look up at the thing and I see, well, they've hit red ten in a row. It's got to be black, and then I just donate my money. <laughs> and then it's just—it turns out to be red. Yeah, it turns out that if it's nine times in a row, that doesn't mean that the tenth time is going to be uh, is going to be black. So. And those double greens and the—they the, just never it's come up. It's all over the place. Yeah. I can't. That's why I stick to poker. All That's right. why I don't gamble. <laughs> Well, they don't build those things on people taking money out of there. That's for true. Sure. All right, everybody. That's that's our uh, daily dose for today. Remember, the daily dose is brought to you by the Tri-State Radiology Center. The Tri-State Radiology Center offers same or next day appointments, and they accept most insurances, including Medi-Cal. They have a wide open MRI and offer digital X-rays with your reports ready in 24 hours. Call them today for an appointment at 928-460. 7226. Thank you, Tri State Radiology, for continuing to sponsor this program. We appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, all of our videos, our uh, um, Athlete of the Week, our Athlete of the Month, our Educator of the Month, the Daily Dose, our Valley Voices, all of our videos are on our YouTube channel. They're also available to stream on our uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, the Anchor app. Uh, there's a whole list of them in the description, so go and check those out. And uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends to tune in and check it out. It's a nice way to kind of get some morning information, and then uh, and you'll have that information when you go to work and while you're coworkers. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We hope to see you out here tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow.